Hi and welcome back to another video. This one's a little different, we're not necessarily going to do a flow, we're instead going to look at one of the key elements of a vinyasa class, what is now known as the vinyasa. Um, so this is your way of lowering from plank down to a back bend and back through to downward facing dog. We all know this can look in uh, lots of different ways, there's lots of different modifications we can take and it also involves that slightly terrifying word chaturanga which we all hear and we hear it cued and we look around the room and we wonder oh god how am I going to do that what does it mean what happens and that all happens in about a 20 second moment where everybody is moving all at once and you're probably pretty knackered because you're in a vinyasa class um, so I thought we'd take just kind of like 10 or 15 minutes to break down what those movements feel like um, how to maybe build the strength for a full chaturanga and then maybe you've got a little bit more confidence next time you go to a class or you take a class online and you're cued to move through a vinyasa to downward facing dog and you have a bit more of a knowledge about where you're going with it. So um, for this ideally you'll need a block or a large book. Um, the dictionary does quite a good job as does kind of any of the later Harry Potters which most of us have got one or the other of those kicking around. So that would work. And then also ideally a strap. Um, this is only for one exercise towards the end. If you don't have one, you might be able to get away with tying a um, dressing gown cord, but it needs to be able to not move when it comes into a loop. So if you've got a strap, see if you can pop it into a loop so that it's about shoulder distance when you pop it around your arms. Grab those bits and bobs, hop on your mat and let's get going. So to start off with we're going to come to hands and knees and we're just going to take a few little rock backs and forth just to begin to move into the wrists. So taking that weight forwards and backwards getting the wrists used to having some weight on them. So fingertips are nice and strongly spread and then bring yourself to stillness. It's a little bit of a warm up for our back. We're going to come to probably the way that I cue this vinyasa most of the time in classes. So we're going to start by coming to plank. So you really want to press the floor away with your hands. Squeeze your bum. Let the knees softly lower to the floor so they're slightly behind the hips. Bend into the elbows, hug them towards the waist, come all the way down to the ground. Engage the legs, roll the chest up, cobra tuck the toes under and bring it through to downward facing dog. So I'm going to do that three more times just to begin to wake the body up and know that this is a perfect way of, pro of uh, practicing a vinyasa. If you've ever been in a class with me and I'm not teaching you'll notice this is what I do a lot of the time anyway. So I'm going to do that three more times. So to start off roll yourself forwards towards your plank position Nice soft lower of the knees down towards the ground. Core engages. Bend the elbows, lower the body all the way down to the floor. Inhale, lift the chest. Tuck the toes under, downward facing dog. Again, roll the body forwards towards plank. Bend into the knees, lower them to the floor. Nice slow lower, hug the elbows towards the waist, come all the way down onto the ground. Squeeze the glutes, lift the chest, cobra, tuck the toes under, press it all the way back, downward facing dog. Final time, roll the body forwards towards plank, bend into the knees, down onto the ground, bend into the elbows all the way down to the floor, inhale, lift the chest, tuck the toes under, downward facing dog. So we should be feeling a little bit warmer there. We're going to warm into the shoulders and the core a little bit more by taking three waves of those waves towards plank. So roll onto the tiptoes, roll the body forwards towards plank, bend into the knees, press it back downward facing dog. So two more, wave the body forwards, bend into the knees, press it back. Final time, wave the body forwards, bend into the knees, press it back. Hold here in downward facing dog 
and then slowly bend into the knees, bring them all the way down to the floor and sit yourself back onto your heels just for a moment. Clasp the hands together, just take a little roll through those arms and take that little roll of the wrists in the opposite direction. So really important for when we're lowering to the floor, strength between the shoulder blades. And a brilliant way of doing this is making sure we're working our plank properly. So bring yourself forward, let the hands come to the floor, spread through the fingers. Start off with, let that engagement in your shoulders go. So let the chest drop. Notice here we kind of begin to lose core engagement as well. And then begin to press the shoulders towards the ceiling. Engage into those arms and notice how that entire back body and core begins to fire. So again, lower that chest, let that engagement go, press into the hands, press it all the way up. And then keep that engagement, extend one leg behind you, toes tuck under, let the other leg come back and join it and you're in our high plank position. So keep those arms strong, but notice how now our plank really doesn't feel like it's necessarily entirely in our arms. Take one more breath. And then slowly pop the knees back to the floor again, sit yourself back onto your heels and take a little wriggle into those wrists. Beautiful. Take hold of your block, your dictionary, your copy of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, whichever one you're going with, and we're going to pop it towards the front of our mat on its highest level. We're going to bring the hands pretty much either side of it, maybe just slightly further back. And we're going to make sure we're in that position where the knees are possibly ever so slightly further back than the hips. Arms are going to engage exactly like we're in plank. And from here, in core engages, we're going to bend into the elbows and bring the chest down towards your block. You're going to hover just above it and then press yourself all the way back up. So we should feel there we're beginning to get some work into the arms, but also the core. We're going to do that three more times, so bend into the elbows, lower yourself down towards the block, hug the elbows in, bring it all the way back up, beautiful, bend into those elbows, draw it down, engage into the core, press it all the way back up, final time, bend into those elbows, bring it down, and bring it all the way back up. Sit yourself back, have a little shake into those wrists, and fingers crossed you felt those arms working, but also your core beginning to get involved. Lovely. Next little exercise, so you can do these along with me or you can pause and play a little bit more. We're going to pop the block between our thighs, and I want you to squeeze it. So this is really good for activating our core muscles. From here, hands are going to come back to the floor, and a little tricky, you might end up dropping the block, so really squeeze it. We're going to send those legs back, finding our way to our plank position. So really squeeze that block. And notice that maybe that's alleviated some of the stretch out of, the, some of the strength, sorry, out of the arms. From here, shift those hips back to downward facing dog. And then keep squeezing that block, roll forwards, find your way towards your plank position. And then shift those hips back, bring it all the way back towards downward facing dog. We'll do that two more times, really squeezing that block, feeling that lift in the centre of your body. And then bring it back. Final time, wave it forwards towards your plank position and then shift it all the way back to downward facing dog. Bend into the knees, pop them all the way down to the floor. Release that block, pop it to one side, and again, maybe find a little bit of a wriggle. Nice, perfect. We're gonna take that block again, and we're gonna try some little press ups. So we can do these with the block between the thighs on the knees. So we're going to take that little lower down. Just be aware of kind of popping as much of the block out the back of your thighs than out the front, otherwise you're just going to land on your block. So either hands under the shoulders, on the knees, 
or bring yourself back up to high plank. And from here we're going to bend into the elbows, squeeze the block lower down halfway, press it back up. So again, these can be done on the knees, we're going to lower down halfway, press it back up, keep squeezing that block, take one more, bend into the knees, sorry elbows, bring it down, press it all the way back up, and then release the block, pop it to one side, and have just a little moment just to release everything. Hopefully you're feeling they're all pretty strong too. Final little thing. So we've worked on coming down. We've worked on coming back up towards downward facing dog. What we've not worked on is that transition from plank to chaturanga and through to upward facing dog. So in order to get that movement between chaturanga and upward facing dog, we really want to be engaged in that center of the body. And you want to have the feeling of the shoulders pointing forwards, not down to the floor. So that's all about not lowering too far. So if you think from plank, if we come all the way down, it's very difficult to lift back through without hinging into the lower back. Whereas if we come from plank, we come down halfway, turn the feet and lift the chest, Hopefully you can see that's not only a little bit easier, but it's hopefully not crunching into my lower back as much. So brilliant way of learning this and to give a little bit of support to your chest. Take your loop of the strap, pop your arms through it. Try not to have the D-rings pressing into the flesh of your arms just because they're uncomfortable. And we want that strap just above the elbows. And so that our arms are about shoulder distance apart when we reach them out in front of us. So this strap is going to catch your chest for you. So again, we can do this as an exercise, just learning where to come down to on the knees. But if we're looking for that strength and that test of kind of where we want to be for lifting through to upward facing dog, then we're going to tuck the toes under, bring ourselves to plank. Remember that feeling of squeezing the block, so thighs wrap towards each other, um, core engages. Bend into the elbows, find that lower down halfway, you're held by the strap. Turn the feet and lift the chest. And then bring it back to downward facing dog. Your head will probably be caught by your strap, so it won't be your most elegant downward facing dog. So we're going to try that two more times. So from this slightly odd downward facing dog, you can roll forwards to plank. You're going to hug the elbows towards the waist, bend them in, lift the chest through, find your way to upward facing dog. Beautiful. And all the way back, turn the feet downward facing dog. So final time, nice and slowly, roll the body forwards towards plank. From here, bend the elbows, core is strong, let the chest come down towards between the elbows. Turn the feet one at a time. Glutes and legs squeeze, chest draws forwards and up. And then bring it all the way back. Downward facing dog. Lower to the knees. Unhook that strap, pop it to one side. So final little test, let's see if we can do that as a full vinyasa. Or maybe you're taking that beautiful modification of being on the knees, working on maybe a halfway hover and then coming straight down to your belly. I personally don't like lifting from the belly up to upward facing dog. I just find it hinges too much in the lower back. So if you're coming all the way down, by all means take quite a nice high cobra, but try not straightening the arms. And if you're taking upward facing dog, the knees are staying away from the floor rather than resting onto the ground. So, Let's all meet in downward facing dog. From here, roll forwards onto the tiptoes, find your way to that plank. Nice and strong. Either lowering to the knees or you're gonna find that halfway hover, elbows hug. Turn the feet one at a time, lift to upward facing dog or find your cobra variant. And then bring it all the way back through to downward facing dog. From here, lower the knees down to the ground. Sit yourself back on your heels. 
Maybe have that final shake of your wrists. And I really hope that was helpful, guys. If you've got any questions, drop me a DM if you're watching this on IGTV or in the comments below on YouTube and I will try my best to help. But fingers crossed, that kind of vinyasa -y thing is feeling a little bit less scary. You've got some drills to work on to build that strength and you'll be flowing through them in no time at all. Thank you so much and I look forward to seeing you again.